Hello and welcome to On The Curves. I'm your host, Team Albus Daly. Joining me this week is Uruguay's next superstar racing driver, Mighty Sassaris. We caught up recently to chat about how the 2022 F4 US Championship is going, her IndyCar and F1 dreams, what it takes to stay motivated as a racing driver, meeting the Vice President of Uruguay, and much more. So, without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Maite. Thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Thanks, Simon, to you for the invitation. I'm, I'm quite good. That's great to hear. So first thing I like to ask everyone who I talk to on here, what first got you into motorsport? Well, the, the first thing, I think it was like my passion for cars. My dad is a rally driver and my brother did like a few tests. And F1 Minority, the, the championship of Formula BMW. And so I, since I was like in the belly of my mother, I kept going to the, to the tracks, to rallies. So I think my passion grew like since I, I, I'm conscious. And when I was like seven years old, eight, I wanted to start racing. But my parents didn't want me to because it was it is a dangerous sport, and I was like the little girl from of the house, and they wanted to like to take care of me, and so they they put me in all these sports: tennis, handball, hockey, so I could like not get Trying into more sports. It. Yeah, yeah, completely something to distract me. And then when I was seventeen years old, sixteen, I said like wait, no, why can my brother do it? And can I, I cannot. And they told me, well, well we, we wanted to, uh, to you for fight for it, like to really get the, the, that feeling that to work hard for it. So <laughs> that was like the kind of thing that, that made me like, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to work hard for it. And that's it. So make sure you know it's what you want. And it definitely seems to be so. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And then, did quite well first of all because I mean you achieved your first podium in San Jose in the Uruguayan National Karting Championship what was that like to get on the podium the first time? Well it was like um, in a category that is like the the one of the most uh, hard in Uruguay uh, it was the DD2 and um, there was like a lot of uh, good drivers Argentina that came to compete here and it was a, a category when the champion were, uh, who won the, the scholarship for going to the Rodax uh, okay. championship in the World War, yeah. So it was pretty intense, the competition there. And it was one of my third races, like I was completely new and it was like, uh, uh, I didn't expect it at all, but, but it came and I fight for the championship at the end. So that was, was very good for me. I gained a lot of experience getting with all these new all these drivers, like from years in my country, was like fighting hand to hand, and I I got the runner up. It, it wasn't bad. I didn't get the scholarship, but but it was I'm good. Saying, it for, good. For something where you weren't even expecting to be on the podium, you did not too badly. No, <laughs> good, good, yeah. So, was, and again, second place. I mean, in, in terms of that, did you think after the first podium that? Was it just a one-off, or do you think, oh, maybe, maybe I've got a chance here? No, it was like, oh, maybe I got a chance. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, it, it gave me like um, a little bit to to move, like to fight a little bit more on the next race. So, okay, I have the the capability for being like mm. third. What happens if I push more? Yeah, uh, it could be like it you was got that one taste of for the. Yes, yes. And uh, then I tried to do two categories in one weekend so I can train more and, mm. and that go well. I got a double podium. I didn't get the second place in DD2, but I, I still fought for it. So, mm. yeah, it was like I'm the, the first experience that I had like a real championship because I started in 2019 and mm. I did like a few races in Junior Max, Rodax. And then on 2022 was like the the most 
professional that I have been because it was a, like the whole championship and I was going to every race. I was going to say then, and going back to what you were saying earlier, it shows that you're really willing to put in the hard work and you really want this then, and it kind of reflects in the results and you're <laughs> feeding it then. The thing is, when the, they, my parents didn't allow me to race all those years, it was like when I got the chance, I was like, oh, I'm going for it. You're going for it, yeah. <laughs> I've got some years to make up for. I've got to really just go put the foot down now. Yes, yes. Floor, floor to the end. <laughs> It worked, you got on the podium. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> and you also then took part in the W Series test early this year. How did that happen and what was the whole experience like for you? It happened, um, I did on 2021, um, my first races in Formula 4 in, my, in Uruguay, my country. Mm. And on my second race, I got a, a second place getting on the, it was a race on the rain. I started from the pit lane. It was like even more really than <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I ended in second place. And then on the third race, I did up another podium. Um uh, that it wasn't raining on that race, but it was good. Well, still good podium race. to podium. Yeah. And I think of that results, they contact me. I received an email from the W series that they want me in the Arizona test on February. Hmm. And they they are they were choosing 14 drivers all over the world to do this test. And it was a Formula 4 car in Arizona, United States. And well, the, the experience was fantastic. I think I I was in a in a in a place where the professionalism the hardworking, good drivers was all over the place. Mm. I get to meet like new new girls that were drivers, their stories. It was a, a tense a, like place where everyone wants to to win, but also in a friendly manner you know, with mm. each other. That we were working all hard, and I think we are we weren't looking at each other like, oh, you go fast, you did this. You know, no, it was like we were focused everyone on on each on on their test to get yeah. better to improve. So I think it was like I I grew up a lot on that test. It was a uh, super professional. I didn't have the experience that the other girls had had it, and I also learned how they work, and, and that was like a good because they came from all over the world. Yeah. I said like Europe, the Formula Regional from Alpine. There was uh, another Formula girl, guarding from United States Formula. So I get to work like with each country maybe <laughs> and. Uh, so you have like, it, was, it was like a global thing very much. Yes, it was a global thing. And the good thing about it is like they're, they're, we are not all the same and we work different and you, can, you get to see that. And uh, the W series was um, very strict on, uh, on us. And that was a good thing. That was a very good thing. They told me that I did a good job that I get, I get to keep working. The only thing I need to do is like more experience that we, we were, we know that I started yeah. uh, racing three years ago. So they want me to get like a championship and maybe try next year. I was going to say, it's, it's, I was going to ask, but you kind of answered my question there before I got there. Perfect. Um, saying that you got noticed from your results from last year and then with everything going, if everything goes at least relatively well this year, there's no reason why they wouldn't necessarily invite you back next year and we could see you then maybe. Um, and again, it's just, it's that annoying thing of just not enough experience and you're just probably thinking, I wish I could have started sooner. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is uh, the thing or maybe to change something, go faster. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what would make me to improve, like to change their decision. Uh, but my improving was uh, each session and they, they notice and they know my, they know my driving, they have it all. So maybe we could have a chance next year. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, to put it like, oh, it will be this yeah. because I don't know. You never know that uh, maybe I do another thing. So my, my goal is to, to go there to, to try the series next year, but I, I'm working hard also on my path. Uh, if, in case I, I don't go there, because mm. you, you never know. Good, good to have uh, well, Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, to get the, 
to get professionally, yeah, to be a professional driver and get my dream into Formula One. <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be nice to, I mean, okay, it's not the end of the world if you don't get W Series because there's loads of other stuff, but at the same time, it would be nice because we don't really have that many from South America in any of those categories at the moment for from F1 to W Series. So having someone, especially from Uruguay as well, where I can't honestly remember the last driver from there off the top of my head. It'd be great to see that that come through then. Yes, on the test, uh, I was of the selection of drivers. I was the only South American and there was no no other. And I think it's, it's good to have a representation on the high Did you feel high like level. you were representing your continent there or were you not thinking about that? <laughs> No, I'm not thinking about it. They, I receive messages from people, you're representing South America or you're representing Uruguay. No pressure. I think, yes, my country will, will be will be like, well, I'm representing Uruguay, but it's, it's mm. difficult to put in that position that you're representing like a whole country. I, I mean, we are little, but we are like three million something. And, and you feel that, you feel that. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're saying as well, you competed in Formula 4 last year and you're doing the same in America this year. How is that all going? It's going on? good. I had some troubles with the first race in, in Nola Motorsport. Um, I, I broke my wrist uh, like a few weeks ago uh, before the race. So bad it timing. was kind of, yeah, bad timing. That's, that's all. I was like training. Uh, okay, things happen. <laughs> Yes, and the, we missed, we had some troubles with the gearbox in my car, so I missed the practice, and then it was my, like my first time in the category, and the, the, I got to the qualify with like 15 laps maybe on, on that track, I didn't know it at all, and the qualifying was all full of red flags, so I did like three laps, clean red laps. The last thing you need yeah. on top of everything else there. Yes, and I went to the to the first race like a little like not not so good as I want prepared, and I tried to push. The second race wasn't that bad. I I make a good lap time, having used tires like the the same lap times as the the, the guys in front, and I I did some overtakes. It, it wasn't that bad, but on the third race. I was like maybe 18 and on the third corner I was P10 and they like Not kicked me out. <laughs> yeah, if they kicked me out of the race, they touched me from behind. Oh, yes, and yeah, and the car was damaged and I had to retire. So I think it, it was like ups and downs because I really got to know how hard this category it's very is. Weekend, but... Yes. But the same happened in Road America. I think that I improved a lot on that. I got from P20 because I we, we had a crash with my teammate because I missed the gen of the of the yellow flags. And so I got to start on the back on the second race. And I went from P, P20 until P12 and on the race. I finished it. So I think we, we had a chance to fight for uh, some points. That, that is good for ours being new in this category. And then on third race, the same happens as the other one. Third corner, I think it, it will be like, I need to get the third corner done in the first lap. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. And so that that made me realize the same as we were talking about the podium in San Jose, my first podium. Okay, mm -hmm. I have a chance to, to fight more and I will push more into the next one. I think we are doing the correct path, uh, trying to improve, gain experience is what, what we, we are here in this category. And we have the, the objective, the goal, that on the end of the year, we, we can fight like way, way more ahead. But it's a, it's a process. And then the next race, I think we're, we're going to start much better. That is Mid Ohio. Hmm. I was going to say, it sounds like you just need some good luck more than anything else. You put everything else there, it's just that that extra little bit of something. But it's especially good, I think, that on the tricky weekends you've had so far, you've still been able to measure that improvement across the weekend. So it's like, okay, 
in that one race you started P20, but you finished P12. Like that's still a pretty decent result from when you look at it overall. And it's like you're saying, you, if you'd been able to start a little higher up, that could have been points because you'd, you'd have made the same progress in theory. So it's nice to have that kind of reassuring. You can take something from it, even if it's not necessarily the most fun weekend. Yes, uh, definitely. It was like just 11 laps on the second race because Road America is so long um, that we have like 30 minutes of race. And in 11 laps, it was like a good improvement. We were fighting with the, uh, with the 10th and the 11th, but uh, we, we didn't get that chance on the last. Yes, yes, we needed definitely more laps. And I think I see the improvement. I feel more comfortable with the car. That is that uh, a good thing to, to get your know your car and how to push it with your limits. I had some trouble in the quality that I didn't classify good because I have with the with the brakes. But I, I'm looking forward yeah, with brakes. Oh, no. Ah, no, yeah, but <laughs> I, I'm looking at the positive sides because it, it gave me like pushing more and pushing more. I think uh, you, you are here to to learn also and to get results, and I'm I'm fighting for it. Uh, we, I, I think, my objective is to get all the experience until the end and to to make that that result. So it definitely sounds like you've you've got a firm plan in place, and there's nothing that's going to stop you from going after yeah, it. So I like that. It is. <laughs> Is there a track then that you're most looking forward to racing on this season? Well, definitely was Road America, one of those. My <laughs> brother won in his debut there, so I wanted to experience what that amazing track was. And mm -hmm. it, it was definitely an like amazing experience. It, it lived up to expectations. Yes, yes, totally. It, it's so fast. The, most of the grass is like flat all the way. And, that, that's a good one like the first real track so like the famous mm. real track that I have been to that you, you really need to to get the car going with with all the well the weights and and you have to put all the theoretical part like the physical part of the, the car and to think about it work on it and then for sure the secret of the Americas it's one that I really want to, to get it. Uh, I, I hope we race with the Formula One that weekend. Uh, we, will, we will see, but it's definitely one It'll of the, quite the something tracks. If you can manage that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely so you're, one you're already grinning about it and it's not even like confirmed it's happening yet. Imagine how big the <laughs> smile will be with it. That does happen. <laughs> no, no, I'm not confirming because I don't know, but it's like a wish. Hmm. It's a, a, a wish that I have. Um, but definitely Coda is one of the tracks that you see on television watching Formula One. I'm like big fan of Formula One and the race on that track is like being a Formula One driver. You can you can imagine that it will be a dream also. It won't feel like Formula Four for, for, for that race. Yeah. Just <laughs> I could imagine I'm Formula One and I didn't even know it. <laughs> So what do you think has been the most useful thing you've learned in your most sport career so far that's helped you? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, I think um, to know yourself, like the first thing, to push you, you know, over the limits that when your mind says, I, I read uh, Ayutthaya Senna, I think, said that or or I think Schumacher I'm so sorry I don't know the, the quote <laughs> for sure but it's uh, when your mind tells you to break go like 15 meters uh, like ahead because yeah. it's true you you always have that kind of thought okay here's here's the gear I'll break now you have to push a little bit more to go faster and to be uncomfortable all the time that's the the way that I find it and so it would be like, know yourself that you can go way, way faster than, than you think. And then work hard, go for your dreams, work hard. I think that that's what kept me going in, in all of this, because I was uh, like a little frustrated that I couldn't race. And I tried to tell my parents like, well, but I don't want to race just to train, get me on a garden. I won't do like... 
a thing and they were like, okay, okay, get you on the card. And then I did a lot of time and I did, no, this is one to, I want to do like my whole life. I, I want to race. And I told them, what can I do for the next race? I just listened that there was a race like two weeks ago, like two weeks mm -hmm. in advance. And they told me, well, if you get on that reference time that was in, in San Jose, the, then I will, I will go to the race. Okay, and challenge accepted. <laughs> Yes, of course. Um, I think on that session, on a few laps, I was on the timing. And I was, like, <laughs> way, way slower. And I, like, got off, like, five seconds, maybe, on that. Yeah. And then I raced, and I did a, a, a good race. I was, I think I finished top five. And it was, like, okay, yes, for okay. sure, this is what I want to do. Uh, it was my dream. I was, I imagine if... Then I was dreaming of doing my first race. Imagine now that I'm in the States, uh, racing Formula 4 in the national championship with very good drivers. And I did the W Series test. I think yeah. I came like a long way in, the, in this path. And I'm like so happy about it. And each race is like a dream. So it really, it really comes across the passion you've got for it and as well as showing that how far you've come in a relatively short period of time as well that probably serves quite nicely as that motivation to keep pushing and keep pushing because you don't know quite what will be next and how good it could be. Yes, and one thing my brother always told me is like, you never know when it's going to be your last race, so enjoy the, the ones that you have now. And that is... Why well, the brother, is it? <laughs> Yes, and I think uh, it's like a way of life, like to enjoy the moment and get to, to, to what you want, get your goals. If you have that, it's like motivation most of, most of the days. I, in this sport, it's very strict and you have to get on a diet, specifically, so you can have a good improvement in the gym and then in the gym so you can race good. You have you are comfortable with your body, not getting like uh, exhausted, and then to have strength. And I think what keeps me motivated to do the, all those things is is that racing. Hmm. And, and as well, I think um, Chris, going back to what you were saying earlier about um, when when you think you've got a break you break a bit later and keep going faster a bit and test yourself like this way and it reminded me and maybe you would have had the, the comparison before but are you then like the next Daniel Ricciardo that you're going to be waiting for the last minute and then you'll break and then be overtaking just into the corners there yes yes I was gonna I kind of feel like we've answered this question already but just in case we see anything else there do you have any racing ambitions for the future I mean you've kind of are seeing where everything's going, but is there a specific thing that you would love more than anything else? Um, the thing that I would love like, more than anything else, it would be like Formula One. It was like my goal um, to get there, try it, race. It would be like awesome, but, but to get the opportunity to get on, a, on this fast car, like mm -hmm. I'm in love with the speed. So it will definitely be one of my, my goals. And IndyCar, I'm also like so keen on trying it. I think they are the, like they are insane races. Mm. There's it is a different format than Formula One, but I really like it. I really like it. And it's a good one to watch. I mean, the, the race from the day, I don't know if you saw the, the street race in the wet. That was just <laughs> insane. <laughs> Yes, that, that's it. The, the races are a different format, but it's like, it's pretty good. And it's really demanding on the on the physical part. I think more mm. in the car than Formula One because there are much more time and an oval, it can get tiring. Mm. I think it's, it's a different it's, kind it's of really, endurance in a way. Yes, and I, I really, I'm thinking I'm trying it. <laughs> it's like, I know it's not easy but to say that I want to try it, but I think Formula One is, will be like the most for me, but I'm also like open to try another categories. 
I say theoretically, you're in the perfect place at the moment because racing in America is that's opening up to Formula One more and more, and potentially some more American teams interested in F1. You could always go IndyCar and then Formula One. Who knows? Yes, I mean, that's true. That's true. I, I don't know which path I, I will continue on, but definitely the, the Formula One is open more on the, mm. on the United States, and then the Indy is also open like a lot with the the, the women in mm. in racing. They have, I think, one driver, Tatiana. Yeah, and then there I know there's another girl that are that is going to try it to race. So. I think that is good to to know that Indy is open up to to women. Okay, so maybe Formula One in the future will will do the same. In the meantime, go and make friends with Andretti and see if that does anything for you. <laughs> yes. So then, as well, I was doing a little bit of research, and you got to meet the vice president of Uruguay. How did that happen? What's that about? Well, it was fantastic. Uh, it was a good experience. It was before one of my races in Formula Four. Um, they she gave me a lot of support. She wanted to know me to get to wish me luck, and it was like a good experience to chat with her. Um, he, she gave me the support. It's good to to know like the authorities of your country that get to gets you they, to they noticed you. Yeah, they notice you, and it's like. Um, it's good to, to have like it's like a support from all the mm. country because they represent all of us mm. and it's she's a, a great leader in all of the the women things and sports and not, not also on women but she focused like on all sports and she does that with all the, the sports that are going to travel abroad to race and yeah it's it was like encouraging you know and yesterday I I saw that in one of my likes of my post in Instagram, it was the president of the <laughs> of my country, and I was that's like, gonna be a weird, oh, "That's gonna be a weird feeling, now. Oh no! Like what <laughs> I'm going to do? I didn't realize, and it was someone that told me, "Like look, the president, give you like," and I was like, "Oh no, I didn't notice." <laughs> and I think that is a, a good thing because I I get the their support and they. They like the things. They're good. They're good. They are looking forward for that. Is we are a small country, and when some sport athletes gets to compete in the in internationally, they're really supported about it because it shows, yeah. <laughs> there's not so much people that does it. So when when it comes one. I get uh, I get to know some family on the last race in Road America that mm-hmm. was on Wisconsin and they didn't know me at all, but they offered me, okay, you have a house here, come to, to our house, I will go to the race, and they came and we get to be really good friends, and that shows what country we are. And so I like, really like that atmosphere there. It's just fully supported, like no idea. And then straight from 0 to 60, like we are supporting this person for everything now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. But to get a like, you know, like it's just a like, but it's a like. He doesn't it's, it's, follow me. And well, you, you think they're sitting there, the person running the country is like, oh, I've just got five minutes. I'm going to scroll through my phone. Yeah, I like this. And it's, like, <laughs> ah, it's weird, no? <laughs> yes. And, and he, do, he doesn't follow me. And... Uh, it's, it's good to know that, well, he, he may be searched or, or seen yeah. the news. And I think it, it's, it's good for us that he's so busy and to get like one like he knows he's like a big supportive uh, for us. So it, it's, it's encouraging, yeah. Uh, it's uh, meeting, getting all sorts of interesting press co- coverage there. It's, it's quite amusing. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I'm saying about Uruguay as a small country and there's how many people though like you say what's something that people might not know about it that they should oh <laughs> I, I i don't know um it doesn't have to be anything like massive just whatever comes to your mind about it. yes well what i thought it would be like uh, i hope they are know like the story that they didn't let me racing so they not not the story that I didn't raise is 
the hard moments that I have been through on um, when I started racing because I was uh, like a rookie mm-hmm. and most of the part with kids that were that started racing like six with six years old and sometimes being a woman they didn't like it and I think that's a good thing so oh I think especially for young ladies like little girls that want to chase their dreams and like sometimes family don't support her or don't know how to do it I think it will be good to get to know that part so I can maybe encourage them like mm-hmm. the vice president and the president encouraged me and my parents and my family and I myself maybe with with me they can text me they can send me an email and I will and I will respond to them if she if they need like some kind of support or or maybe a motivation word you never know what they need a couple of fun questions then that have nothing to do with mood sport to finish off first one if you could go to the moon would you wow uh, <laughs> yes uh, well I I have like mixed feelings. I want to know because I love all the scientific projects. I'm like obsessed with the universe. I love all of that. I I wanted to study astrology when I was young and I still get to know that feeling. But now with all the things that we are doing with the planet, environmentally, um, I think it's not not good to to step on it. I think we, we should get to calm down a little bit and <laughs> to take care of our planet. Yeah, so before I was like, yes, I would love to make studies, to know it, get out of space, but now I, I think I, I wouldn't. Yes, in a more ideal world then. Yes, yes, just totally. And then last question, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what food would you choose? You're not going to believe it. But if I want to, like, one meal, I think it's, like, most of my breakfast, it would be, like, banana with peanut butter. <laughs> it would okay. Be, like, <laughs> Definitely wasn't expecting that. Yes. That, that's, like, you, you never, you know, but that is, like, my go-to meal. I, I don't get, like, it's just, like, a little bit. It gives me full. Good, good fats. Good fats good carbo, and then a yogurt, good protein, so all the nutrients. Simple but, but tasty sounding, I like it. Yes, good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. I want to thank you for your time and wish you the best of luck for the rest of this year and for everything you have, everything else you do moving forward. Thank you, Timo, for you. and It was an, uh, a good interview. I want to thank you. Uh, for what you do for all the, the sport, the athletes. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks again to Mighty for coming onto the curves with me. And I want to wish her the best of luck for the rest of 2022 and beyond. Join me in soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curves YouTube channel. And you can listen to me talk about Formula 1, amongst other things, over on the Undercut podcast, also on YouTube. Away from here, you can follow me over on Instagram at t.albers.daily.onthecurves and read my various motorsport articles over on Is It Fast, Paddock Sorority and Supercar Blondie. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.